He Hillsboro Police Match Commander has agreed he was incompetent and his mistakes and oversight caused the deaths of 96 fans. David Duck Enfield said he had done his best under very trying circumstances and sadly my best was not good enough. But he conceded failing to close the tunnel to central pens of the Leppings Lane terraces was a blunder of the first magnitude. He said he believed football fans contributed to the disaster. Mr. Duck Enfield agreed while he was not negligent, he did not act as a competent match commander and the risk of death was not obvious to me. He also said he told Peter Wright, then Chief Constable of South Yorkshire Police, he had lied about Liverpool fans' behaviour to the FA Chief Executive Graham Kelly in the hours after the disaster. The former Chief Superintendent said the revelation had left Mr Wright very unhappy. Mr Duck Enfield was in charge when a crush developed in terraced pens during a FA Cup semi-final between Liverpool and Nottingham Forest at Sheffield Wednesday's Stadium, on April 15, 1989. Rajiv Mainong QC, questioning Mr. Duck Enfield at the inquests, on behalf of 75 victims' families, said the match commander's negligence caused the disaster and the deaths of 96 Liverpool fans. I wouldn't use the word negligence, sir, Mr. Duck Enfield said. What word would you like to use? Mr. Mainong asked. Mistake. Oversight. Sir, I did not foresee the consequence he replied. He agreed with the coroner Lord Justice Goldring's assertion that a reasonable, competent match commander would have foreseen where fans should go and would have closed the tunnel to the pens. Does it therefore follow that on the day you did not act as a reasonable, competent match commander? The coroner asked. Yes, sir, Mr. Duck Enfield replied. He also said he cannot deny his failure to give an order to close the tunnel leading to the Leppings Lane Terrace's central pens was what Mr. Mainong called a blunder of the first magnitude. Do you accept that those mistakes led to overcrowding, serious injury and death in the central pens? Mr. Mainong asked. Today sir, 26 years on and with hindsight, the mistakes I made that day were a contributory factor, he replied. Chaotic, hectic. Stressful. Asked if he thought drunk, ticketless and late fans also contributed to the disaster, he said it was his view that football fans played a part. He said that while in his position in the control box he had no first-hand evidence there were drunk and ticketless fans at the stadium, I think there's been evidence at this court of fans pushing at the rear of people waiting at the turnstiles. I suggest that your failure to give that order to close the tunnel was so serious and fell so far below the standard expected, that it amounted to gross negligence, Mr. Mainon said. Mr. Duck Enfield replied that in my view, it was not negligent and it most certainly was not grossly negligent. The hearing also heard that Mr. Duck Enfield did not know of the so-called Freeman tactic of closing the tunnel to the Leppings Lane pens until the last two or three months of the inquests. Asking Mr. Duck Enfield about a conversation with the FA chief executive in which he lied about fans forcing an exit gate, Mr. Mainon said when it suits you, you can't remember but when you want to assert something, your memory is absolutely fine. This is one of the strange realities of post-traumatic stress disorder, Mr. Duck Enfield replied, drawing gasps from the courtroom. He said he was not making excuses and had nothing to cover up. I've put my hands up and have admitted my failings and I will continue to do so. He said the situation had been chaotic, hectic, stressful, and I don't expect anybody in this courtroom to understand. He admitted that by the time he spoke to Mr. Kelly, he knew something horrific was unfolding on the terraces, but said he never gave another thought to what he had said. Mr. Mainong claimed this was the start of a police cover-up and the beginning of a false narrative about Hillsborough that has sadly survived to this day. Mr. Duck Enfield said he could not comment on where we are with what has been said over the years, because I have shut myself away. The barrister continued there were discrepancies between Mr. Duck Enfield's evidence to the court and the testimony he gave to the Taylor Inquiry, which investigated the disaster in 1989. Mr. Duck Enfield replied people don't lie, but there are inconsistencies. You're lying to Graham Kelly, you're lying to your boss, you're lying to the club, you're lying to the directors, you're lying to everybody, Mr. Mainon said. I've admitted my failings, 
Mr. Duck Enfield responded. Dismissed like a schoolboy. Mr. Maynon went on to discuss the meeting Mr. Duck Enfield had with his chief constable about an hour after the disaster happened. The former chief superintendent agreed Mr. Wright was furious when he heard Mr. Duck Enfield's account of what happened and that he had lied and said the senior officer was very unhappy overall. I remember walking into his office, he was behind a desk and he was not best pleased about the events, he explained. I just remember having related my story and being dismissed like a schoolboy out of the headmaster's office. The jury heard during a press conference on the night of the disaster, Mr. Wright told journalists there was nothing to connect the opening of Gate C and the crushing in the central pens. Mr. Maynon said this was stage two of the police cover-up, namely the assertion that there is nothing to connect the opening of Gate C and the crushing in the central pens. Warning from 1981 Mr. Duck Enfield said he did not accept he was stage one, but I will agree with you totally that the comments of the chief constable were not as clear as they should have been. He was asked about a final police planning meeting on April 10, days before the disaster, when Mr. Maynon said he was warned about the dangers of overcrowding and crushing in the stadium's West Terrace. Mr. Maynon said supped Roger Greenwood specifically raised the issue of crushing and overcrowding if Liverpool fans who had tickets for the Spian Cop were moved there, because of his experience in the 1981 FA Cup semi-final between Wolverhampton Wanderers and Tottenham Hotspur. Mr. Maynon said he should have been alert to the serious risk to life and limb if too many people were allowed into the pens. Mr. Duck Enfield said he understood what Mr. Maynon was saying but could not recall the conversation with Mr. Greenwood. Earlier, he was asked about his admission on Wednesday that he lied about Liverpool fans forcing a gate open to enter the ground. He said the reason he did not admit lying about fans' behaviour on the day sooner was possibly because he was in denial. He did not know when he realised he had made such grave mistakes, he said. He said the inquests were the first opportunity to apologise fully without fear of seeing anybody misrepresenting what I was saying. The inquests continue.